All right, so we're gonna have a look at how to harmonize with the song So Cold. So we're gonna start with the melody. Let's take the first note. And if we were to look for the high harmony, we're gonna go up two notes in scale. So we start on this first note. And that should be our note right there. That it's quite high. Yep, there we go. So let's listen to these two parts together. As you can see, once we find that note, both parts, they're just moving together. All right, that sounded pretty good to me. Let's listen to the next part. Cool. I thought that sounded pretty good, so we're not going to worry about making any changes. Let's have a look at the low harmony. So once again, we're going to start with the first note of the melody, and we're going to go down two notes in scale. Ah, so it should be ah, that note right there. Yep, cool. So let's listen to these two parts together. All right, so there was something weird happening there. That note right there. You can kind of tell what's happening. There's some tension being created there because whatever the chord is underneath of it, it must be a C chord. So the fifth of a C is a G, but we were singing a G sharp. So that's going to be clashing with that G. So whenever we're fixing a harmony part, if it's a low harmony part, you take the note and you move it down a step to fix it. If it were a high harmony part, you would move it up a step. So we're going to move that down and um, that should fit a lot better. Yep, much better. Let's keep listening. There it is again. Same thing, we're gonna take this note and move it down a half step. And you can hear it every time it sticks out. And I'm gonna move that down. kind of hear it there. Let's try moving that down, see how that works. All right, the rest of it sounded pretty good. So that's really all there is to it. Um, if we were just doing the melody and the low harmony, those are the only fixes you'd really have to do. If it were just the melody and the high harmony, I think it was fine, so there weren't really really any fixes that needed to be done. But if we were gonna do both parts together, um, now all three vocal parts are creating chords. So we need to make sure that they're creating chords that work well with the music. So let's go ahead and listen to what all three of these parts sound like together. All right, so something was a little weird there. Let's have a look. Uh, you can see right here, we've got a diminished chord. You'll notice that there are two notes between the first and third and two notes between the third and fifth. So typically, diminished chords are gonna sound a little bit off. So the fix is simple though. You either take the high note and move it up a step or the low note and move it down a step. Um, let's start with the high. Let's see what that sounds like first. All right. It's a little weird, it's kind of jumpy. So let's take the low note and move that down. See how that sounds. All right, that was a little better. Um, I think because these notes are repeating, typically what we'll do is we'll take the repeated note and move that down as well. Let's hear how that sounds. All right, and then this note's kind of jumping up. So to keep it from sounding so jumpy, we're gonna move that one down as well. sounding pretty good. And here's what's interesting about this song. So um, in most songs, a diminished chord sounds weird. And I was actually quite surprised to find out that we have a diminished chord right here, but I think it actually sounds pretty good. It sort of creates this nice tension before the resolve that happens afterwards. 
Like to me, that sounds pretty good. Um, if you didn't like it, you could fix it, take the high note, move it up a step. Which that sounds pretty good too. And you could do the same thing with a low note. Move that down. That one might need a little more tweaking to work, but you kind of get the idea. But I think it actually sounds good as the diminished. So <laughs> for like the first time ever, we're gonna leave that alone. We're not gonna fix that diminished chord. All right, let's listen to the next section. There is a diminished chord that doesn't work. So again, we're gonna move these down. Same notes again. Can move those down. So again, here we had that diminished chord again. Um, it didn't sound too bad. Um, but I think I would like this high note to go up. Sounded good. Let me hear this. And yeah, here we've got those diminished chords. And again, they, they don't sound awful. But I do think they are a bit much. Let's try moving these low notes down and see what happens. And we'd probably have to move this one down and this one down as well. Not too bad. Let's try the high harmony, see what we get. And then it would sound good to take these notes and go up. There we go. pretty good. That might be the best way to do that. Let me hear the part before it. So that's not too bad. There's a few different way ways you could go about doing this, but I just wanted to give you an example of how I would go about doing this. You really just experiment. Um, if something sounds a little weird, take the high harmony and move it up a note and see how that sounds and if you like the way that's sounding you might have to adjust the notes before and after it um, simply by moving them up as well or you could do the low harmony and it would be the other fix you would um, move the notes down instead of up and same thing if you like the way it sounds moving down you might take a note that happens afterwards and move that down as well so there's a few different ways you could go about um, arranging this harmony let's have a listen from the beginning and see how it sounds so not too bad, but yeah. Um, hopefully that gives you guys an example of how you can come up with a few different arrangement ideas. Um, there's not really a right or wrong way to, to do harmony. It all just comes down to using your ear and deciding what you think works best for the song and, and what you like best. And keep in mind that just because the high harmony is above the melody doesn't mean you have to sing it there. You could move it down an octave, and that might change the decisions you make when moving notes. So for example, this ending part here, if we were to take these last few notes and move them down an octave, that's going to kind of change the way that section sounds. And that way, since the high harmony is not above the melody anymore, it doesn't kind of take away from the melody. So the melody sticks out more and the harmony is a bit more subtle.
and then with the low harmony back in there. Yeah, that actually sounds pretty good. And you could do the same thing. You could take the low harmony and move it up an octave if you wanted. So as you can see, there's a lot of different ways you could go about arranging these harmony parts. If you'd like to mess around with that yourself, um, I'm going to include a link in the description where you can actually download this backing track and all the different harmony parts so that you can isolate them and rearrange them and see what kind of stuff you can come up with. So feel free to check that out. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.